Columbia engagement, we're trying to move lift to Vancouver and BC uh, in 2018. Um, want to talk today about uh, about on one question that we're here to answer, which is, are we ready uh, for autonomous vehicles? I'm going to talk from a consumer perspective and look at all the indicators from the growth of ride sharing uh, over the past five or so years uh, that, that show really set the foundation for, for why consumers are ready for AV. I'm going to talk about our vision for deploying autonomous vehicles uh, and also talk a bit about what it's going to take to get there and talk a little bit about you know, what it means for our communities, our cities, uh, and a little bit on the regulatory side. So if you don't know Lyft, Lyft was the first peer-to-peer -peer company, uh, peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing company founded uh, in 2012 in San Francisco. It was actually the second peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing company that our co-founders, uh, John uh, Zimmer and Logan Reed founded. They founded Zimride in 2007, then sold that and, and began Lyft with the seed money in 2012. It was founded with a, a simple mission, and that was to uh, improve people's lives with the world's best transportation and what it means for autonomous technology. There's four main pillars I want to hit on today, and that is uh, connected, autonomous, shared, and being electric. These are the four key paths to deployment of autonomous vehicles. Connected. So the Lyft platform is all about connecting drivers and passengers. Uh, we now are alive across 95% of the United States, so 95% of the U.S. population has access to Lyft. Uh, and then in December, we launched Toronto, uh, really excited for that, um, and Ottawa as well. Uh, we're now doing well over a million uh, rides a day, and we think of these as Lyft as connections between driver and passenger. So we know that people are adopting and getting, are, are quick to, to utilize the technology. I mean, it was not that long ago that we had left for trying to, you know, convince folks that it was safe to share a ride with another sort of general member of the public who had been through all the screening methods. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it's been quick that people have adopted and they found that this was a safe and fun way and affordable and reliable way to travel. Um, so connecting rides is a key part of this shift in consumers um, towards autonomous technology. I want to spend a few moments here talking about Lyft's sort of dual strategies when it comes to the testing and deployment of autonomous technology. So we have uh, what you can see on the left side here is what we're calling our open platform. So a lot of these uh, providers, big companies such as GM or Drive AI, Ford, Aptiv, Waymo, Jaguar, Land Rover, Autonomy, just some of the names, these are all uh, manufacturers, folks who are developing autonomous technology. But we're pairing with them so that they can deploy that technology on a Lyft platform. Right? People are used to using Lyft platform, uh, and, and these companies can partner with us, and we're, we're looking at partnership opportunities really across uh, the US and, and beyond. And then the other side of our sort of uh, autonomous uh, strategy is we are building our own self-driving system. Um, we opened up a level five engineering center down in Palo Alto, uh, and they're really just, you know, focus on, on building our own system out. And we're really excited in March when we announced a partnership with Magna. Now, if you don't know Magna, Magna is a, a massive tier one uh, automotive, uh, automotive provider, uh, actually based in Ontario. You can do this now on the Lyft platform. If anyone's going to Vegas anytime soon, uh, we just relaunched uh, our partnership in a partnership with Aptiv, uh, an autonomous company um, where we, where right now it's operating at about 10 uh, uh, properties on the Strip. Uh, you can pull out your Lyft app and you can opt in and what you'll see is what you see over on the right hand side which tells you you match with a self-driving ride. Uh, and you, you really, with safety drivers and everything, but you, you right now are able to go experience this technology. During CES, one of the other major sort of tech events on the west coast um, that was uh, in Vegas in January, um, we ran a test with Aptiv, we did over 400 rides, uh, over 99% of those rides were in autonomous mode, so no hands on the wheel. Uh, and we got driver ratings of uh, 4.99 4. <coughs> 4. Uh, out of 5, which we're excited about. And then we just re-announced that we're, we're ramping up to over 30 cars. So this is really exciting, and, and this is a technology that you, as a pub member of the public, can experience now. I'm sure a lot of uh, people read the, the headlines that about the fatality involving uh, an Uber autonomous vehicle uh, down there in Phoenix. So in, in terms of safety, what do you think we should do? The more we regulate AVs to be safe, the longer it's going to take to get them here. But in Canada, uh, about 2,000 people a year die on Canadian roads every year. So the longer we delay this technology to potentially save these lives, the more people will die whilst we're developing tech to save them. It, it, 
is, is there, what's the best way to balance safety and time of employment? Anyway. So, so I'll take a crack at that. I grew up in Detroit. My grandfather uh, tried to invent the seatbelt in the early days before seatbelts, and you could not imagine the pushback from the car companies on seatbelts. It's going to add another four dollars. Why would we spend that money? Can you imagine today without seatbelts, and you look at every innovation since then: anti-lock brakes. I'm not going to trust a computer to apply the brakes for me. Now we have it in every vehicle. Airbags. Is the airbag going to go off when you're driving down the road at 100 kilometers an hour? Today, every car has airbags. So it's coming, it's clear it's coming. We just have to make it safe. And for me, you know, think about how is this gonna change? You know, when you have all this extra time, you know, and you look at an hour, hour and a half in the Bay Area per day, you waste on driving. What could you do at that time? One of my favorite books is Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond. And he talks about the tribes that made it and the tribes that didn't. And one of the big changes that made tribes beat the other tribes was having enough time to stop and think and do something productive. And the big change was being able to store food. Up until then, you spent your whole day either killing or being killed or looking for nuts or fruits or something to eat. You had no time to do anything else. Once the tribes learned how to store food, they could organize, they could plan, they could talk to each other, get to know each other, coordinate better, and they ended up surviving when the other tribes didn't. So you think about getting back an hour or an hour and a half of your day. What else could you do to get that much time? I think that's the biggest impact that this is going to have. I've got a neighbor who is 96 years old and she still drives and she just went to get her driver's license renewed in California. And they, gave, they did her test, she had her glasses, she passed the written test, took the road test, and they issued her a license for another four years. And she came back to them and she said, are, are you out of your mind? I'm 96. I'm not going to be alive in four years. How on earth can you give me a four-year license? And she honestly doesn't want her license taken away until it needs to be taken away. And so she actually loves the idea that her 77-year-old son is keeping track of how she drives, and when she starts driving erratically enough, she will then be a only Lyft and Uber passenger. But she wants that freedom until she needs it. And technology, in that sense, is it, it, it's amazing. It gives you freedom, but also gives you control. The time when it's going to shift, for me, is when it's better than a human, and that is already today, but much better than a human. And I look at the adoption of Alexa, and as a disclaimer, Amazon's an investor. Alexa is loved by people because it finally is good enough that it can actually understand what you're talking about. Every voice technology before that was just not quite there. With driving, if you're not quite there, you're killing somebody. So it has to be much better than a human. It can't just be equal to a human. It has to be much better. Weighing in on the sector is Danny Rittman, CTO of Gopher Protocol, traded on the OTCQB under the symbol G-O-P-H. Danny, a big issue in looking at the future of self-driving cars is safety. Can you share your thoughts as an expert in artificial intelligence, how it can play a key role, and what is your company specifically working on in regards to autonomous vehicle technology? Yes, uh, one of the main issues today with driving, auton with, uh, with driving of autonomous cars and basically robotic cars, and, and we actually have seen this in also a few, uh, of course, unfortunate accidents in the past, is the identification. Of, first of all, we actually have a set of, of issues. One is identification of the actual car geolocation, the actual ge geographical location of the, of the car itself. And second one is trying to provide an answer, a quick answer to all kind of quick obstacles, I call it, all, all of quick uh, incidents that are unexpected and interrupting the driving and, and the car, of course, the computer, the AI system supposed to provide an on-the-fly um, um, solution, and that's typically a, a very, very, um, it's a very unique and uh, challenge uh, task for the computer car. So um, currently, a Gopher protocol offer a few type of technologies to address that, and we already tested a few of them quite successfully. One is our geolocation system. Um, Gopher protocol owns uh, and developed, and still uh, it's ongoing developing um, a, geo a, ge a geographical, a geolocation system which is based on a GPS, but also is not depend on GPS. That means um, if any interruption in the GPS transmission or information uh, is occurred, that the system immediately kicks in its, its own proprietary 
radio-based system, which is uh, basically supporting or replacing the GPS uh, geosystem. So at any point of time, uh, our uh, autonomous car will know where it is, will also be able to identify uh, other uh, conditions and objects on the road. Um, another advantage that we currently have with our technology is our AI system. Our artificial intelligence system currently is based, is constantly connecting to many database sources and collecting data as it goes. Um, be, beside the fact that our system is actually today is a cognitive system, that means it's learning, it's actually based on machine, uh, machine deep learning system. And while it's collecting the information, um, it basically analyzes it on the fly, uh, makes sure that it gets all the information that needed for road condition, weather condition, obstacles, and, uh, and other uh, vital information in order to kick in and provide uh, a quick solution, uh, along with, of course, a smooth ride and a safe ride uh, of the vehicle. So. The main thing today to focus on the safety of autonomous vehicle is, is, to our opinion, is one, the geosystem. It's not just a simple geosystem. It's supposed to, uh, of course, identify accurately the actual car location and also identify and, and, and find uh, also uh, related obstacles or unexpected, um, I would say, objects that may uh, happen or occur in front of the car, in the back and all sides, of course. And that's one of the tricky uh, things, the tricky subjects of the safety. That's where we are focusing. And, of course, along with that, uh, we do uh, believe that we need a strong AI system uh, to support a constant analysis. And, and um, more than that, it's actually prediction almost predicting um, uh, events even if they do not occur, so at least the system will be ready in case something happens. So two major uh, safety points is geosystem and AI system that actually has a full cognitive um, capabilities and prediction. Introducing Gopher Protocol's GNET Car Autonomous Driving System. Our concept uses the Avant Artificial Intelligence Engine and Gopher's GNET private secured network for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. Together, these technologies revolutionize autonomous driving, providing the ultimate in safety and efficient driverless technology. Self-driving cars are a reality with major companies such as Tesla, Ford, Toyota, Google, and Intel that are already investing billions of dollars in development. This video outlines Gopher Protocol's innovative technology applied within autonomous vehicles our core technology within this type of application consists of three main topics. First, an artificial intelligence engine, the brain, that analyzes sensor data and makes decisions in real time. This AI engine enables another essential feature, a learning capability. Second is a communication channel, like our brain synapses, where our GNET private network enables car-to-car -car secured communication. Third is our reliable tracking location system, that works with or without GPS, enabling geolocation accuracy within the centimeter range. These features enable vehicles to communicate with each other, learn and share vital information about road conditions, obstacles, weather, and other critical parameters. There are various ways that vehicles sense their surroundings in a dynamic environment. The vehicle responds instantly to sudden changes by using cameras, radar, ultrasonic sensors, and LIDAR. To coordinate all these sensors, ultra-smart software and cloud processing are essential for self-driving vehicles. The onboard sensors collect vast amounts of data that must be processed, and a cloud-based infrastructure is critical to handle this data. This is where Gopher Protocol comes in. Our cloud-based networking and connectivity provide vital contributions to the field. Gopher Protocol has developed a system called Avant to control multiple autonomous vehicles that are capable of self-learning and self-adapting. This enables rapid responses to changing conditions and allows the vehicle to instantly adapt to the immediate situation. We use tracking and RF technologies, which enable car-to-car -car communication using a secure radio-based protocol. Research by Gartner projects 250 million connected vehicles will be on the road by 2020. 
It's expected that driverless vehicles will generate $1 trillion in economic benefits and autonomous driving will help prevent 9% of accidents, potentially saving 900,000 lives in the next decade. Autonomous vehicles will become widespread within the next 10 years, and we can expect important benefits such as a reduction in fossil fuel use, reduced emissions, and fewer auto-related deaths and injuries. We've already conducted successful autonomous driving experiments using our robotic vehicles and we'll expand this research in the coming months. Welcome to Gopher Protocol's future world of safer and more efficient auto transportation.